Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk a little further about history. I would like to talk about young people and history, because as we know, we have reached an epidemic in which we are creating historical ignoramuses. And it's not the fault of the students. Really isn't their fault. It's our fault. We should be teaching them. The school should be teaching them better. Parents should be teaching. And there should be a stronger and more cohesive uh, system to push history and to expose history to students. I don't see that happening much. Granted, there is some. But granted, there is very, very little of our history that is truly being taught. Parents, may I make a suggestion? There are historic parks all over this country. Take your kids there. Immerse yourself in the history. Share the history with your kids. Talk about the history as you were a kid studying it. Make it of interest. You know, history, granted, is not always a very easy subject to get involved in. One of the main reasons is because it's not taught well quite often. You know, you ever notice, like, I've seen teachers, and they just kind of have their face in a book and rah, 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 and not really getting the kids involved. I love to see the history teachers that are a little different, and they get involved in it. You know, <laughs> I had a history teacher who really made things a lot of fun. One day he came walking in wearing an Indian war bonnet. I thought that was great. And then he came dressed as like a, a cowboy, and he, you know, he, he really got into it. Because you know something? That's the important thing to do, is to add an element of fun, an element of joy in learning. When I taught, I taught American history in sophomore, junior, senior years, I would try to get the kids really involved and make it fun and make them laugh. And they remembered. And I always remember talking to the kids at the end of the year, and they said, you made history come alive. And you created a great deal of interest on my part to learn. I heard that from lots of kids. And the fun thing was the parents, when I would meet with them, said the kids came home and over dinner, they'd be talking about all the stuff that you told them in class. And they said, we wish we were in your class. <laughs> and you know, it was a fun thing. I did get a chance one time to have a class of parents. And I did this at my own time and had a whole class. And I did thing, uh, a whole thing on, on, on the history of sound recording, actually. And then we also had little talks on various aspects of history. That was a fun thing. So I got to teach the parents and the students. And I would love to encourage other teachers. It's not easy. I understand it takes a lot more of your time. I understand that. I hate to say it. There's some people that want to come into work, teach, and then leave. Class would start where I taught at, I think, at 8.30. And I would be there at 7.30. And I would meet with kids beforehand. And school would end, I don't know, 3.30, something like that. And I would stay often until like 5, sometimes a little later, and meet with kids and talk with them. And I feel that as a teacher, you have a, a sacred obligation you have a you have a, a strong commitment 
to inspiring another generation. The secret and the most important and noble aspect of teaching is this, that what you do, what you teach, and how you teach it, will inspire a generation and a time that you will never live to see. But you will have a part in that because you inspired people. And the inspiration that sparks from your being will be carried in the soul of the student you taught. And they will take that spark that you gave and give it to others. That is the important part of teaching. So I love to inspire people who teach. I love to inspire parents. I want to inspire kids. You know, I'm a little older now. I'm not that old. But I would love, and I have mentioned this before, I would love to start an online gathering and have an open forum with students, with adults, and let us all get together at certain times. I need someone here who has the technical ability. I confess I am still in the Stone Age with technical ability. I have learned to make films or videos here on my cell phone. And that's what I'm using right now. I don't know how to edit it, so I go from one end to the other trying to not make a mistake, which is difficult, I'll tell you. But I do it, and I do mess up here and there. But I just go on. But I would love to find some people who have the technical ability to work with me. We don't make anything. It doesn't matter. We're inspiring. We're helping, a, we're helping the future. And that's what life's about, is, is to, to look at what's going to be and trying to make it better than what we found it. And when it comes to history, I hate to say that has not been the case. What history was... 50 years ago is not what it is now. We need to remedy this. We need to fix it. And so I want to help, but I need help to help. So if people have ideas, and I know there's a lot of people who are teachers, were teachers, that watch all this stuff. Maybe you have ideas. Anything will help. But most important, let's just remember this. We need to fix this historical illiteracy. I want to make this a campaign. I want to make this a drive. Because we are talking about a dangerous situation, as I mentioned before. And if this situation is not remedied, the consequences are going to be beyond belief. So I thank you. Think about this. Ideas are really welcome. I'm one person thinking of these things. But what we need is a team of people. What we need is a, you know, that thing, what was the, the, the Hillary Clinton's way, it takes a village. We need a village of people to work together, to inspire, to excite, and to share. Please let me know what you think. I welcome your answers. Thank you.